Hi Twitch and welcome back. We're here live on twitch.tv slash AWS. I'm Abby Fuller, I'm joined by Claire Ligori, who is a principal engineer on the containers team here at AWS. Claire, thanks for joining us. Thanks, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited for you to be here too. Um, so I know that we've had, we're talking about DevTools today, and we've had quite a few, kind of a collection of announcements in the last few days uh, for, for DevTools. Can you tell us a little bit about what's launched recently? Yeah, so two things that we've launched this year specifically for containers users is one, blue-green deployments for ECS using Code Deploy, and two, triggering your code pipeline pipelines using a Docker image stored in ECR, the Elastic Container Registry. And I believe that you have actually a set of demos for us. I have a set of demos, so I came to show and tell. I'm ready. So we can switch to my yeah. computer here. Take a look at Claire's screen. There we go. So I came up with a sample application that I'm going to deploy to today. This is reinventtrivia.com. So we have a list of reinvent trivia here. Uh, but one of the problems here is I actually have an answer that's wrong. So is how that many chalk my talks? Fault? It is definitely your fault. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> how many chalk talks are scheduled for reinvent 2018? Okay. 592. As it turns out, I checked the schedule today and it's a bit higher. We've been adding Chalk Talks like crazy. So we are going to uh, deploy a change updating this number okay. to make sure people can get this answer right. So this site is driven by a service that's running in Fargate. Uh, it's a simple REST API that's serving up these questions and answers. And then this is my service that's running in Fargate. So one of the things you can see is I have a load balancer in front of it. It's highly available, it's got three different tasks running. But one of the things that I've set up here is blue-green deployments with code deploy. So we can see that the type here is blue-green. I also have my Docker images stored in ECR for this, repository, for this uh, service. And you can see I've been doing a lot of builds as I've been getting ready for reInvent <laughs> this week. So the way to set up blue-green deployments with code deploy is we make it really easy in the ECS console to come down and select blue-green deployment powered by code deploy. And that will walk you through setting up your service for this. Can we recap really quickly for those of us that don't know what a blue-green deployment is? Yeah, absolutely. So a blue-green deployment is where a new green fleet of tasks starts up in parallel to the tasks that are already taking live traffic, which is the blue fleet. And then once all of those tasks are set up, Code Deploy is going to do a traffic shift at the load balancer level, so that's going to take seconds to do. And then at that point, rolling back happens within seconds as well because the blue fleet's going to stay around for a little bit. So there's a lot of great deployment safety features here that Code Deploy brings. Uh, one is alarm monitoring automatically, so it'll automatically roll back your deployment if any of your CloudWatch alarms go into alarm. The other is validation hooks, which I'll show, letting you test out your application in that green fleet before live traffic actually hits it, make sure it's all good. And then uh, finally is this really fast rollback, rolling back within seconds because it's happening as a traffic shift at the load balancer level. We're talking about ECS and containers for blue-green deployment, but there's also other, other targets that you can have for blue-green deployment. Yeah, so absolutely. Code deploy. So Code Deploy also supports blue-green deployments for EC2 instances, and then it supports blue-green and canary deployments for AWS Lambda. Ah, I see Lambda. I had to, I know, I had to ask I for know. Lambda. But we're talking about containers guy. today. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> So you're trying to trick us onto, onto Lambda. Oh, this is payback for Tim Bray, right? You were up here with me, with Tim, and Tim and I, serverless fans. This may or may not be a biased panel for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fine. Well, let me take you through the code deploy setup for blue-green deployments with containers. This is, after I've gone through that ECS wizard and the ECS console, it sets up this deployment group for me. I've got the Amazon ECS compute platform, and then one of the things I have here is this test listener ARN. So this is how you're able to test out your green fleet before you actually shift over production traffic from the production listener. And then down here I have a whole bunch of CloudWatch alarms, like uh, looking at the 500s that are coming out of my service, looking at unhealthy hosts in my Fargate service. If anything goes into alarm, it'll automatically roll back. And not to interrupt, but yeah. we had a, a question from the stream. Uh, 
I think it's it's a good clarifying question. Uh, they're not sure what Code Deploy is. Uh, it's not a new service. It right? is not a new service. Yeah. So Code Deploy is a fully managed deployment service on AWS. Uh, it will deploy to now ECS, but also EC2 and Lambda. Great. So uh, I've been talking about some of these safety features. Let me walk you through a really quick kind of flip chart here to show you what this looks like when you actually deploy with code deploy and a blue-green deployment. So this is kind of the setup you would normally have with a Fargate service. You have a bunch of tasks running your V1 code uh, in your Fargate service, and you've got a target group, and you're probably serving up uh, traffic on something like port 80 with your application load balancer. So to get set up, you set a new test traffic listener on a different port, doesn't matter, I chose port 9000, and then a second target group. So in order to be able to test your new green fleet with your new code, you uh, code deploy is going to hook that up to the target group for you, and then set it to the traffic listener for testing. So at this point, you get the option to run integration tests or just a simple curl to that port 9000 to make sure that you get all of the responses you expect, hopefully a status code 200. And then once that's done, Code Deploy is going to flip the production traffic listener over to that new target group, pointing to your new green tasks. And now 100% of prod traffic is going there and zero is going to the blue tasks. At this point, you get the option to do a wait time. So you can do a couple of minutes or even multiple hours. And so one of the things you can do is have Code Deploy automatically roll back at this point within seconds to flip 100% of the prod traffic back to those blue tasks. But then once you're happy, Fargate's going to drain those blue tasks, and now you're just left with your new code in production. And that's a safety feature for a lot of people, too. It's a huge safety feature, especially if you're using continuous deployment, because typically the last time that a person looks at the code is going to be when you check it into source code repository. So it's really great to kind of limit the impact on production of any bugs getting out by doing all that monitoring and rollbacks. So this is just an example of a Lambda function that I wrote for that validation hook. All that it's doing is making a sample request to the target endpoint on port 9000, and then checking for that response code to be 200. I love the uh, async await, by the way. <laughs> thank you, yeah, thank you. that's great. I'm I a JavaScript that. expert now after writing this. <laughs> <laughs> I, if, you, if you're dropping async await, I agree with you for sure. So now what I want to do is show you some of the um, files that I use to deploy to code deploy. One is, of course, the task definition. If you're an existing ECS customer, you're pretty familiar with this. Here I have the port mappings for my container, and then I have an image placeholder right now. And I went ahead and filled that in with a recent build that I did fixing that chalk talk count. And then finally, I have an app spec. So if you're not familiar with code deploy, app spec is what defines what you're going to deploy via code deploy. And so here we have an ECS service. I have a placeholder here for task definition because I'm going to need to register that task definition and add it to my app spec. And then I also have the hook that I want to run to make sure that everything in that green fleet is, is ex returning what I expect. So let's go ahead and deploy a, do a manual deployment of that task definition that I have here locally and the app spec that I just showed you. And this is a brand new command in the AWS CLI. Makes it really, really easy to create a manual deployment, or if you're doing scripting, like in Jenkins, you can use this in your Jenkins file. So there's a couple of things that it's doing here. One is registering that task definition that I have locally. Then what it does is take this unique task definition ID and replaces it into my app spec, replacing this task holder, this placeholder here. And now it's waiting for that deployment to succeed. So if we go back to the Code Deploy console, we can see the full deployment history here. So you can see all of the deployments that I've been doing to both ECS and Lambda. And then let's take a look at this deployment we're doing to ECS. So one of the things that I really like is that it's showing me exactly what Code Deploy is doing. It's showing me that my original set of tasks running my V1 code is currently still getting all of the production traffic. 
So if I refresh this page, I'm still getting that V1 code. And currently what it's doing is spinning up that replacement task set. So if we look at the ECS console for this, one of the things we're going to see in that deployments tab in the ECS console is that there's now a deployment in progress, and I can see what it's doing. So one of the things that it's doing is spinning up the same amount of tasks that I had in my original task set. And then code deploy will, once that's all spun up, code deploy will do the shift at the, at the load balancer. So one of the things I can also see down here is what the app spec looks like once that AWS CLI command replaced everything. So it replaced that task definition placeholder with that unique number that it just registered. And then I can also see all the deployment lifecycle events. So at each one of these events, I can actually run a validation hook here. I've chosen to do pre-traffic, so before, after it allows the test traffic, but before it starts allowing the production traffic. So what we just saw is that it just updated the test traffic route setup, and then now it's routed my production traffic to the replacement task set. Now it's giving me a wait of one minute, so this is something that I configured. Right now it's checking all of my CloudWatch alarms, all, any traffic that's coming in right now to reinventtrivia.com is uh, going through the new code. So we can go over here. Let's refresh this. And let's look at this question that we're fixing. Okay, so 644, a lot more Chalk Talks than we originally planned for, I think, when we wrote these questions together, Abby. I apologize for, for, <laughs> for making you have to deploy another update to your app, because I didn't look it up. <laughs> we gave this great opportunity to come and <laughs> demo <perfect>. this. <laughs> um, so this is still waiting for one minute to, um, to check if we need to roll back. It's checking all my alarms. Um, so while this is happening, are there any more questions on the stream? Taking a look. Uh, check back in with Alan Michael. Yeah. Um, not too many yet, uh, but it, it's generally kind of questions surrounding uh, what, what part of the application development lifecycle does code deploy fit into? Is it comparable to this product or that product? Um, yeah. So uh, to answer that, let me show you a sure. pipeline where I'm using continuous deployment. Um, and so one of the places where code deploy fits into is inside of your pipeline using the Amazon ECS Blue Green powered by code deploy. This is a new action in code pipeline. So this is where maybe in your staging environment, like your test environment, and then in your production stage, this is where you would use code deploy to really safely roll out changes to your production traffic. So I'm actually going to start a, another deployment. Uh, this same change has been flowing through my pipeline from GitHub. So I'm going to enable this. I just disabled it for the demo. So I'll enable this, and then in just a few seconds, the deployment with ECS will start up. And so since I'm using continuous delivery, one of the things that Code Pipeline does for me is automatically checks my GitHub source, and then everything flows through the build stage, the staging environment that I have set up with Code Deploy, and then now it is deploying to my production environment automatically. So I didn't really have to do anything. I didn't have to do a manual deployment or anything. As soon as I checked in the code, it can flow through my pipeline. And I like that it references kind of all the different stages too, right? So it, it's linking you back out to the to the commit in, in GitHub. It's showing you the source that you got from ECR. So all kind of the, the stages as you go through this whole pipeline process are all linked there for you. So if you're trying to debug something, you can go all the way back and say, okay, well, it's this commit that did that. Exactly. And so you actually called out one of our new features, which is the ECR source action. So I can show you that here at the top. What a coincidence. What a coincidence. Uh, it's not only checking my source code repository, but also one of the things I have is a base image in my ECR repository. So I have a custom Alpine Node.js uh, base image with some other stuff layered in there, like an updated NPM, and then I have a doc generation tool that's in there. And so as soon as that image gets pushed into ECR, 
it's going to pick up what that image ID is. This is the same thing you would see if you did Docker images command locally. This is that image ID. And then it flows into the build. And here in the build, I can now use this new base image that I have with updated dependencies or updated Node.js and build my new application image, so the actual image that's feeding this API service. And that all flews, fl flows <laughs> all the way through my pipeline into production. So this latest build that I did of the image flows through there. So this is the example Docker file that I'm using for my base. Again, it's just Node and a couple of different dependencies in there, so it's not too complex. And then I'm pulling from that base image here in my main Docker file. And then this is an example here of a base image pipeline that I could set up. So here's just source and build. I don't want to deploy this image directly. Uh, so as soon as this one finishes building, then that's going to automatically trigger this pipeline, and we'll see a new image ID flowing through the pipeline. I'm a big fan, too, of the, I like the progress bars on this page now that I can kind of see without, without having to like look at a bunch of output that yeah. things, are, things are building, things are deploying, things are happening, yeah. but it's like a little bit more visual yeah. also. One of the things that um, I want to brag a little bit about is some yeah. of the uh, performance improvements that's been made to Code Pipeline. Um, so there was a total re-architecture this year, which is super exciting, uh, to move to a more event-based model. And so these different transitions are now happening in seconds, whereas before they could happen between 30 and 60 seconds. <laughs> we're, getting, we're getting some clapping from Yay! For that. <laughs> really our pretend Great. live studio audience, which is just Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and you can see the actual output. Too. Yeah, so this is the actual output for that build. So we can see it pulling that node image from Docker Hub, layering in my dependencies. And then it looks like this build is finished. Let's see. Super proud, by the way, that you've used Alpine, and that was a, a very nice minimal Docker Yeah, image. you always want I minimal. I followed right? all of your best practices, Abby, <laughs> religiously. Uh, while Thank this you. is going, too, Claire yeah. had a question around this. This is for yeah. building uh, uh, off of a base image you mentioned, right? And it triggers the That's pipeline right. off of that. Yeah. Uh, you, can, you can also do a nested build step inside the Docker image file. Uh, yeah, definitely. Wh what would be the trade-offs there? What, why would you do one or the other? Can you, can you kind of talk to that, maybe? Um, do you mean more about like multi-stage builds? Yes. Or, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I really like multi-stage builds. Um, I'm actually using that here in my main one. Uh, no, not in this one. Different, <laughs> different demo application. Sure, no. Uh, I'll put but, you on the spot. But one of the things I like, which Abby talks a lot about, actually, is almost too much. Too much <laughs> is, um, you know, looking at how minimal your image can be. So things like um, test dependencies for running unit tests can be put into that first base. Right. Uh, build, and then you don't have to copy them into your release image. And that just makes deploying a lot faster because you pull the image a lot faster the if small it's smaller. Image, right? So your pipeline goes faster. Um, so that's been really great um, for some of my applications. Plus, you don't want to ruin all of these nice performance improvements in Code Pipeline by trying to push a, a giant four gigabyte image that's, that's every exactly single time. Right. That's exactly right. <laughs> so one of the things we saw, that build finished of that base image, and so now we have a new image ID flowing through the pipeline, and I've got a new build running for my application image. So that awesome. was really easy. And that was pretty snappy too. Like very snappy. You yeah. Just, you you identified a change. You changed the you changed the image. Then you pushed it up. And then Code Pipeline has kind of handled everything else. Yeah. For and you. actually, the project was called Snappy Pipelines. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I actually didn't it know feels that. Very snappy. I didn't even walk myself into that joke. I genuinely didn't know. <laughs> okay. Awesome. I'm super proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> it feels snappy. They definitely it accomplished does, their, it does their feel goal snappy. there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, we are just about out of time. Uh, thanks to Claire for joining us. Uh, and we will see you back in just a couple minutes on twitch.tv slash AWS. Thanks so much.